so we're back again thank you very much for joining me again and please do look at some alternative videos for different pad work boxing work strength and conditioning rings etc so here we have finn finn's been with me now for two years he trains at the gym in bournemouth he does come to me for additional pad work and additional strength and conditioning just to make sure when he goes into a fight he's in tip-top tip -top condition. So here with Finn, what you're gonna see is different pad work drills, different combinations that we're gonna to put together. Just making sure that his technique is still there. Uh, it's gonna be mainly hands, so you're gonna see hands on there. So speed, we're gonna concentrate on speed, timing, agility, movement, foot movement, and general overall cardiovascular fitness. I have mentioned before in a previous video about boosting confidence. So one of the things that Finn likes to know is that he's, he's still on point. So as I mentioned before in one of my previous videos, boosting, pad work boosts confidence. So successfully executing combinations and techniques on the pad can boost Finn's confidence uh, in particular. It provides tangible feedback and I get also, or always give him tangible feedback and a sense of accomplishment, reinforcing effectiveness of his skills. So, also what you're gonna see in this video is me teaching Finn defensive skills. So, in, defense, in addition to offensive techniques, padwork can be used to practice defensive measures such as blocking, parrying, and evading. This is essential for developing a well-rounded skill set in self-defense and competitive martial arts. So over the years, I've helped Finn become a little bit more adaptable and a little bit more versatile with his fighting. So changing stance, which you'll see very soon, allows the fighter to be more versatile and adapt to different situations. It enables them to use a variety of techniques from different styles, making them a well, more well-rounded fighter. We also use this to confuse opponents. Rapidly changing styles can confuse opponents and make it difficult for them to predict the fighter's movements and attacks. This unpredictability can give Finn, especially, a strategic advantage during a match. This also helps with angles and range. So changing stances help in adjusting angles and managing distance effectively. This can be crucial for creating openings for attacks and avoiding incoming strikes. So with that, we're going to exploiting weaknesses. Fighters can exploit an opponent's weaknesses more effectively by changing stances. For example, a southport may expose openings that are not as, as apparent in an orthodox stance and vice versa. And again, improved footwork and agility. Constantly changing stances contributes to better footwork and overall agility. It helps in developing muscle memory and coordination, leading to faster and more fluid movements. This also gives you a strategic advantage. So stance changes can be used strategically to disrupt an opponent's rhythm and game plan. It forces an opponent to constantly adjust and can disrupt their offensive and defensive strategies. So in summary, 
stance, changing stance gives you different range, different angles, exploit weaknesses of your opponent, gives you improved footwork agility, gives you strategic advantage, and it helps your mental conditioning. It's important to note that effectiveness of stance changing depends on the individual's fighter's skill level, training, and the ability to seamlessly transition between stances. So here you can see at the end of the session, Finn and I normally do a little bit of rings, just a little bit of strength and conditioning, have a big old chat, and yeah, basically just uh, over, go over anything that we've done, everything that we've done with regards to training. So you've come this far, so thank you very much for listening, watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much.